Now in Acts chapter 13, coming to verse 6, And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus. Verse 8, But Hilamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Here we have the perversion of the sorcerer. Now you remember when Philip went to Samaria? Immediately the gospel began to spread and began to go beyond the Jerusalem and Judea and it got into Samaria. Do you know whom um, Philip encountered? Simon the sorcerer. And you know when Paul and Barnabas uh, came to this place again, you know whom they encountered? Another sorcerer again. You remember what happened at Philippi when they were reaching out with gospel outreach again? A, a maid, a lady with a spirit of divination, you know it's there all the time. And uh, you know that when you go into new field, no matter where it is, whether Europe or America or Africa or Asia, now you think about this. All the evil spirits that Jesus cast out when he was in the world, you know they are not dead yet, they are still in the world. Because they have not gone into the pit yet, they have not gone into the abyss yet, because they told the Lord, are you going to torment us before the day, before our time? And they were pleading that he will not cast them into the deep. All Jesus could do was that he will say, come out of him and never come back to this particular person anymore. But then it says they went, uh, they were walking about, roaming about. And then if they cannot find a place, they'll come and check up if there was open door for them again. All the evil spirits that were in the world, since the time of a bear worship, they're still in the world. All the spirits of the evil of evil that were in the world, all those familiar spirits at the time of Ahab, they was, they're still in the world. Of uh, all the dark days, they're still in the world. It is because the light of the gospel is shining. That is why uh, you don't seem to understand what, that these things are there. But you get into villages and see. And uh, I have been to various parts of Nigeria. And in the early 70s, when we reached out, we've been to uh, River Stage, to Bendel Stage, to Anambra Stage. And I can tell you from personal experience, it were, if it were not for the power of God, some of us will not be doing what we're still doing today. In fact, I know some of the preachers of those days who preached, some of them, were, they were even ahead of me those days, but they didn't understand how to keep the power and the presence of God in them. I've had experiences that uh, sometimes when you hear some of these experiences, I, I, generally I don't talk about them, generally. Because as a teacher of the word, we're just to preach the word, preach the word alone. Sometimes uh, uh, you sit just beside somebody, just sitting, not talking, not even witnessing. I mean in those uh, places, in some of the tribes we have gone, within this Nigeria, not even foreign land, within this Nigeria, just sitting beside a person and you feel that heat, you feel that power, literally, literally and uh, you feel like uh, you know those things getting into your muscles and uh, really pulling on it and you say what is all this if you didn't know what was going on and the speed controlling all that area you'll say well uh, maybe i'm just getting sick but uh, if you feel like that you don't understand what's going on and you have to you know just take authority over that thing I did tell you this before, I've uh, confronted people before that while we were just closing our eyes and uh, the man just put his two hands together, we were praying and uh, he just touched my eyeball with his hands and his sensation went through that eyeball immediately. And, but thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, if I didn't know what was going on, I'll say, oh Lord, what is that? Did he, and this man was taller than myself, very tall taller than myself and he was putting his two hands like this in front when we, we close our eyes and we're praying and we're all standing up and he bent down and he used uh, you know those hands to touch my eyeballs and the sensation and the vibration and everything that went into my eyeballs I knew what it meant thank God for authority thank God for power thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ and uh, you know we've been to uh, various some countries that uh, you know you're sleeping at night all around there and you just know that cloud and that suppression very heavy and very weighty 
but thank God for the power of God. But you know, young people, you know, we don't talk about that because we just preach the gospel. Sometimes uh, you see somebody that comes out and talks about demons and talks about evil spirits and uh, they just know a little of this matter. But uh, uh, they blow it up and you think uh, there is a lot in what they're saying but there's no personal experience. But some of us have gone through the thick, we have gone through the cloud, we've gone through everything and uh, we've counseled people. People that uh, they've said things uh, that, will, that will almost shake you. People that li literally can't pray. That those evil spirits, they just oppose, they resist, they hinder the penetration of the word of God. I was talking to a woman, and this woman was not using jewelry. She dressed almost like a Christian, but I knew she wasn't saved. And as I talked to her, and I gave her the word of salvation again, she said, I understand everything you have said in my head. And I said, okay, then let us pray. He said, I cannot pray. I said, but you know, hell is real, yes, I know. Heaven is real, yes, I know. Uh, you know, Jesus can save, yes, I know. Then pray and let us, uh, you know, get rid of this thing so that you can call upon the Lord and you'll be saved. And she said, I want to, but I cannot. Now, what do you do if somebody tells you that? Immediately I knew what was behind it. That's that spirit resisting the penetration of the gospel. And I said, okay, if you can't pray, just kneel down. I know what to do. I can pray. And I prayed for her five minutes, five minutes. And I said, now woman, open your mouth. You can pray now. I'm taking the hindrance out of the way. And my, my, that woman began to pray. And she got saved immediately. God saved immediately. We went to we went to Bendel say some years ago and uh, we got to a particular place we were going to sleep overnight there and think about this place we were going to sleep terrible idol worshiping while we got there the uh, the mother was uh, you know running around uh, a particular uh, idol making the juju and that's the place we are going to sleep and you sleep in that place without the power of God you are in for trouble and he just, you know, they said uh, Brasso and so went on missionary work or evangelistic work. And now coming back now, he discovers that he's not himself anymore. You read the Bible, you can't understand anymore. Your heart is blank. It's like a heavy stone in your heart. And you're an evangelist. And yet you don't know what is going on behind the scene. And as this uh, woman was like that, uh, their, their child was deformed. And he said, we should pray for that child. I said, no, not yet. I said, uh, let the mother finish the idol worship and let her come here. And right before her eyes, this deformed child will be healed. And after that child is healed, I want her to forsake that idol. So we all waited, not singing choruses, not uh, saying, Oh Lord, when we begin, manifest your power. All that is not necessary. If you got ready and got prepared from home, it is not the day that the athlete runs the race that he begins to warm up and begins to practice you practice many many months before that day and when that day comes to you put on your suit you put on your garment and then you get ready if you didn't practice before that day it's a pity you cannot run and so she finished and when she finished with a smile i said a woman look at your child look at that idol you are worshiping and that, that idol has not allowed this child to walk. Look at it. I said, if Jesus heals uh, this child, will you continue to serve the idol? She said, no. I said, okay, let us pray. She was right there. And I said, Lord, heal this child in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen. And the boy got up. And immediately, Immediately that, the woman went to take the idol and threw it in the bush and said, I'm not worshipping idols anymore. We called the father, the father of the child. We said, now what are you going to do? Are you going to be the only idol worshipper in the house? And the father said, if my wife is not worshipping, if uh, everybody is not worshipping, I'm not going to be the black leg, the goat of the house, and throw away idols. That's what we are talking about. But you know, if you do not understand the power of the Lord, the authority of the Spirit, and you just reach out like that, you'll waste your lifetime. A whole lifetime will be wasted. 
and uh, you know sometimes uh, there is a spirit that just makes the people to be totally blank we've been in meetings uh, where we preach and preach and preach and it appears that the people are just not just getting what you're saying they want to understand they cannot understand something is blocking their mind and blocking their ears and and they're giving a blackout in their spiritual eyesight what do you do well come back to acts chapter 13 but Elamas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, we stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, the evil spirits or familiar spirits or the sorcerers, they try to pervert the way of the law by using falsehood or subtlety, mischievous cleverness or deceit or magical arts. They use evil spirit to uh, make the hearers turn away their ears from the faith. Now you look at this man, he had a deceptive name. And with his deceptive name, he also had deceptive spirits. He said his name was by Jesus. You know the meaning of that? The son of Jesus. By Jesus. By Jonah, the son of Jonah. By Jesus, the son of Jesus. The son of salvation. But uh, Paul said, you are a child of the devil. I know you. You are not what your name says you are. Elamas means a wise man. And this man was terrible, occultic. He was literally a medium by himself. Evil spirits and familiar spirits, false prophets and demonized persons, will stand and resist the penetration of the gospel. And it is still so today. And you know where these people are? and they receive the gospel those who want to believe it becomes difficult for them to believe and i want to tell you that if uh, in your home there has been that activity of uh, evil spirits and evil powers you know when you come to church sometimes you try your best you want to believe but it's so hard for you and if you've been involved in fortune telling and palm reading and divination and uh, you know charming and uh, magic and all these evil things in the past now that you just come to church you know if you are not if you don't know what is really happening to you you'll just say well i don't believe i don't believe everything that is said there is something in you that is resisting it that that thing cannot penetrate you know why there is the activity of evil power evil spirit familiar spirit may not be in you directly may be working from outside you but then it is still there and it is still real and except uh, you are in a church that has the fire of the holy ghost and the power of the holy ghost and you are delivered you know you may spend years you know i've seen a uh, people for many many years and they were the desire to get saved desire to get saved have you seen somebody that is uh, you know a sinner and he doesn't like to sin he has been going to a gospel church and he has made all the restitution he knows he wants to make and sometimes he will punish himself and he will put a sand on the ground and will walk on it so as to be free from sin and people are getting saved in that church you know they just come they pray they get saved he will come he will pray he will cry and yet not get saved and he will say i want this word of god but he his heart will be stony it will be very very hard and the word of god to get in it will not get in and when you counsel him you say ah what's happening to you well you know he says i want to get saved then he begins to cry again and he cries and cries and cries five years it can be like that and if the church doesn't know what to do for him oh they'll say okay okay god knows your heart wait for the time of god keep praying and he will pray again he'll pray in the night he'll pray in the day and then even people he invites to the church they'll hear the message like this but not from the same family from another family people that he invites they come into that place and in just about a month or so those people get saved radiant with the joy of salvation and he is still there he's still crying five years six years seven years why is it that the gospel message is not able to penetrate there is somebody standing behind the closed door holding on to the key saying no that gospel will not come in here we're standing the preaching and the penetration of the gospel 
Oh, if somebody has power in that church, if somebody has authority in that church, and will command that person, that spirit, that familiar spirit that is standing behind that closed door, and walk him out of that place, and open the door, and let the gospel penetrate into that heart, oh, the people are suffering in the world. But you know when you come to a place like this, and there is power and authority, you know my brother, my sister, a man that came some time ago, long now, and the devil tormented their house. The wife, uh, you know, was uh, difficult. The husband was difficult. And when uh, the wife said she got saved, that didn't bring peace into the house. The man literally almost killed the woman, throwing chairs at her. And uh, somebody knew about it, and she knew she couldn't help the man, and brought the man to me. It wasn't a church uh, meeting, it was just ordinary uh, meeting, uh, you know, just casually meeting together. And uh, when he came to me, I knew just looking at his eyes, somebody was behind that man. Somebody other than Jesus, other than the Holy Ghost, other than the power coming from the throne of God. Wild, terrible, murderous, just wanting to destroy the world. I looked at him and I excused the person that, uh, you know, that came along. And I uh, said, can I talk to you? And he said, yes. And I started talking to him. I had not finished until his knees knocked the ground. And he started praying. He prayed and got saved. And started praying for me myself. Started praying for the wife. And uh, their child at home was uh, very, very sick. That child could not walk. And uh, I just went uh, later into that house. That time she we had introduced him to a particular church at that time. But uh, he went to the church. The mother was at home because this child, that thing was just behind that family. And I just got into that house and I walked into that room with the authority and the power of the Lord. And I said, uh, mother, get her clothes ready because she is coming out now. And... Uh, I got into that place and prayed for the girl. I said, girl, dress up and meet me at the sitting room. She stood up and uh, dressed up and met me at the sitting room. I said, now a church service is going on in town. So let us go to that church where the father went that evening. And I took that child there. When they finished church uh, meeting and uh, the father saw the child, the father almost fainted. The father thought that the child had died and he was seeing, seeing the ghost. I said, no, that's your child. Jesus has raised her up. And you know, just recently, just uh, last year, there was a crusade at um, National Stadium. Not the one we had, other people were having it. I just walked in there to just see what is going on, and uh, somebody was greeting me, a young lady. So I looked at her. Then I said, oh, you are so-and-so. She said, yes, that's the girl that, you know, the Lord raised up that time. When, uh, and then went to the evening church together and the father thought that uh, she had died. I said, where are you now? She said, I'm reading my postgraduate now. You know, she's gone to university. She's come out. She's done a youth service. And now she's reading postgraduate. The power of the Lord. But you know, what of if you are just preaching the gospel? You don't know about all these things we're talking about. You are blank. You just hear that, uh, you know, people are saying we're going out to preach the gospel and you don't wait in the church and be taught and be matured and be deep in the Lord and you just reach out. What will you do? What will you do? Now in Exodus chapter 7, Exodus chapter 7 from verse 10, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast now his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent then pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers now the magicians of egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantment for they cast now every man his rod and became serpents now look up here before i read the part the rest of the verse suppose he went out and uh, you say, Jesus can save, Jesus can heal, Jesus can deliver. And then uh, somebody is sick and then you lay hands on the person and the person got healed. You think the people may just believe like that and they, then they come to the Lord? Not always. You know that Aaron threw out the rod, it became a serpent. 
Now they were showing Pharaoh, saying, God has sent us. And because of what happened now, won't you believe and allow the people of God to go? He said, that's a small thing. He called these magicians, sorcerers, people with evil power. He said, uh, look at what this man has done. He says, one Jehovah has met him now. Can you help me duplicate uh, that uh, thing that he did now? Oh, they said, that's a small thing. And they brought their rods. They threw their rod down. And it became serpents. You know the attitude of Pharaoh? He said, so what you did, where is the, what was the difference? Because of that, his heart was hardened. And because of the activities of all these juju powers and evil spirits, uh, all the people that hear the gospel, instead of just responding and opening up to the gospel, they become hardened. But look at the rest of verse 12. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. But he didn't give up. Because in the next miracle that happened, when uh, Moses uh, turned water into blood, Pharaoh still called them and said, can you try again? They tried again. It became blood. Water became blood again. So all the time, in verse 13, he had in Pharaoh's heart and uh, that he acting not unto them as the Lord had said. But look at chapter 9. Now, Moses and Aaron did what the Lord told them to do. And in verse 11, and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. That's power. I said that's power. Amen. And you know when that power of God is in your life, they cannot stand. Those witches, they may try. Those people having familiar spirit, they may try. But they cannot stand in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for knowing the power of God. The power of God. And uh, when, you are, when you are preaching the gospel, you better have the whole thing. Not just doctrine, but the deliverance along with it. The dynamite from above along with it. The Holy Ghost along with all that you have.